Hello everyone, hello, welcome back, welcome back to Abstract Medicine, welcome back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining, I really, really appreciate you tuning in and checking in on my videos. I really, really appreciate your lovely likes as well and your comments too, so thank you so much for taking time to listen in on my videos and I really do hope and pray that they are guiding you and putting you in good stead. So I um, thought I'd just check in with you all, just do just a general reading I think. I do have a new deck and it's by Kim Krantz, so I thought we could use this today. It's uh, The Wild Unknown Archetypes by Kim Krantz, so this this could be quite fun. And I thought we would just go ahead with also using her tarot cards as well. So we're going to kind of have a mixture of this and then maybe even continue with the Shadowscapes deck as well. So so this, this uh, reading is going to be a general, so we'll just see what comes through. So we're going to start with the tarot and just see what comes through. So this is not going to be a thicker card. I really do hope you are well. Um, staying sane, staying safe, everyone, at this time of the reading. It is September 2021, but all of my readings are completely timeless. So sending you all a huge hug as well for those of you who really need one. So sending that out energetically. And for your protection as well. So we're just going to shuffle the cards and then see what comes through. Okay, Spirit, what is it that the collective need to know at this point in time, please, Spirit? Thank you so much. <laughs> I just heard No Makeup Tuesday. <laughs> no Makeup Tuesday. It's Friday, the time of this recording, but I'm not wearing any makeup, but... No makeup Tuesday. It could be about you needing to be real as well, a bit more real and transparent as well, not not worrying or caring whether you've got makeup on, jewelry on, you know, that kind of thing, just being real. They are they're also telling me about um about twenty about the age of Aquarius as being more about authenticity and some some people have reverted back into um, superficial patterns as well. Superficial identity, wearing a mask. So 2020 was about revealing those masks and some people have come back into wearing those masks again. But don't, so the channeling is coming through, so don't be disillusioned by the illusions is what Spirit is saying to me to tell you. Okay, so let's get into the cards, the cartomancy. So what is it that that abstract medicine need to know right now. They're telling me to keep channeling, so um, yeah, I just feel like there's something about the illusions and disillusions that keep coming through. So let's see what these cards are. Okay, so we have the Empress here. We have the Empress card here. I'll show you the cards in a sec. The Strength card. Beautiful cards. Wheel of Fortune, Daughter of Cups, okay, that's very sweet, lovely. So yeah, we have some really interesting energies here, um, very strong major arcanas coming through with the Empress, the Strength card and the Wheel of Fortune. There is, oh, so my right ear is burning. Um, okay, so there is a there's a, a immediately the empress energy <coughs> so she's been burnt many times before by a male particularly a masculine that she may be dealing with maybe a counterpart a true love connection or at least a high level um love connection a high level soulmate connection um and i feel like she may have been burnt many times can you see this card it's um i know it's a bit of a blurry video but whatever <laughs> um you see how her leaves are sort of burnt all around there, all around. Um, and it's just, but she's still hanging on, she's still fortified, she's still strong. I'm still, yeah, so I'm still standing. I'm still standing, no matter how hard I try. Looking like a new survivor, feeling like a little kid. I'm still standing. You of my mind. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit out of tune, but you get my 
drift here again i'm not here to like be claiming that i'm a singer i'm just sharing the messages that come through in many different forms in many different ways so this empress this feminine particularly female um energy um is very in her strength she's very in her strength here look she's she's tamed the beast herself she goes within, she's strong, she's nurtured herself, she's very attractive, she's very sexually empowered, she um, knows her worth, you know, um, and she's still standing no matter what his, what life has thrown at her, uh, lemons, lemonade, but she's gone through grenades, you know, so she's been through many wars in times of love this energy here and she but she still has hope for love she still has hope this could also be a mother as well uh, the empress is very maternal this could also be a mother that you're dealing with who is coming across as very strong to be honest um there are there are many women um in around us who are very strong right so whether you want to admit it or not they have immense inner strength they're very strong within and they are kind of like the, the matriarch of the family as well so that's coming through very strongly here as well and this is someone who you admire in your own family setting or this is the energy that you are coming into yourself so this could be a grandmother a mother yourself as a mother or a potential mother who will be continuing this legacy for me the lion does talk about legacy pride um family you know and um and with the infinity loop as well it's like there, there are lots of lessons, there's karma coming through, there's a lot of energy about, um, you know, try, try, try again, you know, this woman has lived many lifetimes before in the same sort of similar setting, but in a slightly different outfit, you know. Um, so, yeah, we have the Empress here, very strong Taurus energy, so you might have Taurus in your chart as well. Have a look at your houses as well. Um, so for example, I think, yeah, my fourth house is Taurus in my chart, so, which is very emblematic for me. It makes a lot of sense to me in my life. So, you know, where is your fourth house or where does Taurus fit in your chart, your zodiac chart, for example? You might also have Leo as well. Um, I also do see here that there is a male in particular, Divine Masculine, who has shown a lot of pride and possibly shown a lot of ego in the past or um, just comes across in that way. But deep down they're very um, they're very solid, yes, but they're very sweet and loving and romantic. Can you see how this beautiful, gorgeous lion is, you know, has a rose. For me it looks like a white rose rather than a red rose and it feels like the white rose is a sign of peace for me. Peace, compassion, calm, the energy of dust settling kind of thing and it's it's in between his mouth here you know when a lion um i'm just having a, a like a visual because i had this really really interesting dream last night actually about um a big cat when this lion is um you know finds a match they become very soft and mushy and sweet you know and they let down their ego as well. They let down their ego too. So, you know, again, we might have Leo in your chart. We might have Leo in our charts here. You might have Leo or you might be dealing with someone who has Leo, but not to worry. It could also just be the energy of it. Of it. Um, this, this female in particular is a married woman, usually um, a wife, usually a mother, usually, right? Um, but this could also be the energy of um, strengthening one's fortification and also life lessons into becoming the person that they always wanted to be, maybe the mother archetype that they wanted to be as well. We're going to have a look at the archetype cards as well and see what comes through with these um, cards as clarification, which would be quite interesting. But this could also be the next stage in your life where this is just the natu natural um, eventuality of things, you know, and it's just strengthening yourself, becoming stronger, becoming more aware of yourself, becoming more wise, becoming more experienced. This also talks about age as well. So it's kind of a gentle balance. I'll get onto the other cards, the lovely cards, the Wheel of Fortune, Daughter of Cups. But there's also a gentle balance of like knowing how to know your boundaries, um, but still having mystery within. The beautiful teaching about a mother that is shared to a daughter 
is usually about always having a sense of mystery around another counterpart energy. You know, you don't want to give yourself completely. Um, and, you know, there are levels of that um, being overtly shown and expressed in our society, particularly in the West, where um, sex is available, you know, um, and there is a lot, there's lots of availability. And I'm not here to judge. Everyone's on their own life path and there are evolutions and changes evolutions and changes will of fortune that happens you know in timelines and in societies you know and modernity and technology these things are an eventual change and things that do happen what i'm saying is that even amongst all these changes amongst all of this kind of like i just heard new world order these changes in terms of our dimensions our identity our social um social programming or even social um governmental, societal changes, um, is there still a sense of mystery of the divine feminine, you know? I also do see that the divine feminine energy, uh, collectively speaking, on a global scale, is also becoming stronger in our society. So when the, as, so since the divine feminine energy has been hidden from many religious um, teachings, um, and in our society as well, where the divine feminine has been defamed, devalued, um, even sex has become less of a sacred act, less of a special thing um, between two loving individuals or between two people that really care and value and respect each other. Um, it has been devalued. Um, again, you know, um, I'm just channeling what spirit is coming through to tell me to tell you my overseers are coming through here very strongly about this message about the divine feminine but becoming stronger as a stronger presence energetically as an archetype stronger in our society um, but it's also um, something about taming the beast as well I'm also getting this energy of the beauty and the beast as well this divine feminine may have um, seen another masculine or a counterpart in particular. Divine feminine energy, divine masculine energy, regardless of gender here. Um, as someone who they've been able to tame their, their animal instincts, you know, or somehow they've been able to penetrate through the hard exterior, the mask, the masquerade, you know, their ego, and actually get through to their higher self connecting with them on an astral level in a psychic way as well but also coming into the heart too because the lion is all about the heart leo's um in general or the zodiac of leo is the sign of the heart flirtation romance as well as being out there in the world being a bit of a show-off being proud of your achievements as well and it's ruled by the sun so it's all about joy and happiness and flirtation but it's also about light being shone on me kind of thing whereas it's quite interesting because we have a moon and sun here so there is this lovely yin and yang so let's get on with the wheel of fortune and the daughter of cups energy here so with the wheel of fortune and the daughter of cups which would be the page of cups we have this lovely message of things evolving and changing. Again, we have the sun here and we have the moon here. So maybe these two people, and in, the, in these cards in particular, I love reading these um, Kim Krantz cards because they're just, they're just so illustrative and beautiful, for me at least as an artist as well. I appreciate them a lot. Um, you know, we have this energy of masculine and feminine, yin and yang, active, recessive. Um, there's also something very familiar as well, because for me, the tree is all about familiarity, family, roots, right? I just heard the roots are on fire. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's there's something changing in a connection here where or there is a male here in particular that wants to change something and maybe wants to bring in a message or start something new in terms of love here with the cups energy. Yeah. This also this is also a little duckling as well, so it's kind of like I'm really unsure, I'm unaware, I don't, I'm sort of new to this whole thing called love. I'm very, I'm very aware, and I'm very proud of my achievements in my career. I'm very proud and very respected amongst amongst my peers. Um, but this thing called love, like I'm an initiate with this. I don't, I don't know. I'm a little duckling. I have no idea how this, what this thing called love is all about. So I'm sort of you know, 
reducing my ego from the energy of a lion that knows it all to the energy of a tiny little kitten or a little duckling, duckling that's very innocent and doesn't really know about this whole world of love. So there's kind of like a naivety that's happening here, or naivete. Let's have a look at the um, Kim Krantz archetype cards. Let's see what the archetype cards have to say. So something wants to, so I feel like this masculine energy in particular wants to evolve and change a connect, connection. I do feel like they um, are very, sorry, I've got a really itchy eye, um, are sort of treading carefully, uh, treading on water, not on on glass here, uh, not on broken glass, but I just heard that I feel like their heart may have been shattered, possibly themselves. Um, the, the Divine Feminine is coming across as very strong in, in her exterior, um, and even though she's been burnt and possibly has lots of scars, she's she has an inner strength that Divine, Fem that divine Masculine does not have. You know, the Divine Masculine is, so this is what is interesting, is that they are the complete opposite, but there's a familiarity and there's a similarity, one way or another, they match each other, they complement each other very well. Where the Divine Feminine has a very, um, sort of like, I just heard amareggiato, so someone who um, may have been damaged, burnt, you know, scarred, quite um, obviously, externally, you know, um, they're showing that externally, the Divine Feminine, her internal is very strong and it's very rooted. She's, so she has an inner strength and this is what is hidden from the rest of the world. It's, it's the energy of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And again, it's, she's saying, I'm still standing, I'm here. You know, I'm providing that legacy. And then with the roots of the tree, these the roots of the tree, which are which is hidden with the moon energy, you know, it's all interconnected with other trees and other like-minded beings as well, other like-minded um, families as well, other like-minded trees. So there's an inner network. Um, and again, it's the energy of the interconnectedness of um, this secret hidden um connection that the divine feminine in particular has with like-minded people this could be other females other feminines divine feminine energies these could be people celestial bodies as well celestial beings that she's has this inner like internet connection this network that she has that really helps strengthen her internal uh, internally whereas the divine masculine is <laughs> he's got all the scars and everything you know he's he's probably battled um, battle worn as well on the outside, but inside he's he's not strong. Strong, he's kind of vulnerable. You know, I wouldn't say he's weak, but he's vulnerable. His divine masculine is vulnerable, expe especially expressing um, his his heart here. Yeah, it's like the lion isn't even looking directly straight ahead. The lion is 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 looking to the side a little bit. Um, and when cats do that, it's because they are um, timid, you know, they're timid. So it doesn't matter how much paraphernalia and like costume they have, and, like amazing mane that they have and all the achievements they have on the exterior and it looks good on paper. Within, they're just like, I'm kind of timid. <laughs> Timid and maybe intimidated, I just heard, maybe intimidated by this Divine Feminine's inner strength that maybe um, is felt, you know, uh, on a psychic level by the Divine Masculine. So this Divine Masculine is sort of wanting things to change, wanting things to change and evolve here, maybe for themselves, but I feel like it's, you know, whatever has been working out for them, um, has worked out for them in their past yes possibly in terms of work they've been very well like they all of their achievements have been very well received and they continue to grow and and build their um their pride and acknowledgement um and respect and honor in society but again i think in terms of love i don't feel like this divine masculine in particular um has built on that at all because they're coming across as a little a little little duckling. So um, the wheel of fortune. I do feel like they want. Obviously, the strength card, the Leo card, is all about wanting to win at all costs. They don't like to lose at all. I just saw the lovers card um, flip through. 
Um, they don't want to lose, they want to win. And the Wheel of Fortune is telling me that this Divine Masculine wants to win. They want things to go in their favour here. And I do feel like it will. You know, we have number three for the Empress card, Divine Feminine. We have number 11, which is interesting. I just got chills down the right side of my, um, right side of my body here, which is the Divine Masculine energy, the right side. Um, and we have the, so the 11 is all about this portal, this opening door, this opportunity to um, strengthen a love or strengthen or basically have the courage internally to um, change an emotional pattern within themselves in order to open up and express their heart here. Because there's this kind of like weird sort of like sticks and threads and ribbons around this globe here around the circle here and it's all just a bit of a mess you know and then we also have this owl as well which is talking to me about athena the goddess of war um and wisdom as well and it's like knowing they have this understanding that they know that they need to change something clear out they have to clear out this karma i would say about negative patterns or things that they've been doing before in their past that has prevented them. They've sort of, it's like they've blocked a certain chakra in their body. Like I feel like their um, root chakra is very strong, their sacral chakra is very strong, where we have the energy of stability, the energy of um, confidence. It's very strong, but I feel like this whole section here is talking to me about the maybe the heart and the throat chakra here which is blocked and so there could be an energy of like knowing that they need to communicate um and so they might come in tent tentatively to express a little bit of love you know and then just see if that open portal will actually open for them that opportunity that door that the wheel of fortune is coming through um via spirit will actually open for them but they won't know unless they walk towards that opportunity so i'm talking in abstracts and metaphors but what i'm saying is is that divine masculine needs to um they're, they're seeing an opportunity and they need to just go ahead and seize it and take action towards it so it's kind of an energy of um desire a need for courage so th this is a world that they've not experienced before you know also, I'm also just hearing um, Pink Floyd's, is it Pink Floyd or Brian Ferry's? Love is a drug, yeah. Uh, love is a drug. That song, beautiful song, I love that song. Okay, so let's have a look at the Empress card. Okay, yeah. Mm, exactly, so we have the Empress card, we have... Wow. So we have the, uh, for the Empress card, we have a clarification of the unseen. Yeah. So again, we talked about the hidden energy here with the moon card. So what people do not know is that within herself, the divine feminine is incredibly strong. She has immense inner, inner strength, doesn't she? Um, and this is something that I'm picking up on the high priestess energy too. Is that again, she's very highly connected and interconnected with things unseen and hidden. You know, she's connected to other um, tribe, other like-minded people, other like-minded beings as well, on a celestial, spiritual level. And this is what is unseen, right? Um, and we have 20, 25, I'm, I'm adding up the Roman numerals. We've got 20, 25, six and seven 27 27 could be significant could be your age or could have been something quite significant that may have happened when you were 27 possibly uh we have the storm so i feel like the divine feminine has really ridden quite a few storms again she's been burnt you know with uh the energy of this kind of red flame maybe maybe she has red hair maybe she's thinking about dyeing her head red as well but it's the energy of being burnt you know this is the energy of lightning this is the energy of the tower card with the storm and this message that I was bringing across earlier is that she was burnt before maybe in love quite a few times or maybe there's been lots of changes maybe lots of awakenings that she's experienced 
Um, and she's ridden a few storms, you know, but within, again, she has that inner strength. And again, she's interconnected root wise with other like minded people that help her create that strength as well within herself. So she's able to stand the test and t stand the test of time and also come in time and time again through many life cycles, you know, many incarnations to um, learn and perfect these karmic lessons uh, once and for all, I've just heard. So maybe the Divine Feminines, this could be your last incarnation on this planet here. The storm, oh, I forgot what L means in Roman numerals. My my auntie in spirit will castigate me for this because she, I spent many summers with her teaching me um, in Italia. So 10, 11, what's the L? I need to find this out. So I'm just gonna pause the video. Okay, so I checked it up and the L means 50. So we have this storm energy here. So we've got 10 plus 50, um, which is 60, and then 5, 65, and 2 is 67, right? So 67. Let me just have a look. Um, There could have been a year where she's at like 12 months, you know, of the year. Again, also 12 for me is the energy of completion. It's also the energy of the last zodiac sign, which is Pisces. Again, picking up on very strong Pisces energy too, with the high priestess kind of vibe here going on with the unseen. And the storm could also be, she could have Scorpio in her chart as well. Um, but regardless, it's the energy of, you know, things have been unseen uh, to the public eye possibly where this divine feminine has really gone through some difficult cycles in terms of a family line some deep traumas some deep pains as well the scorpio for me is about going really deep here things that have been unseen maybe herself she's come across as very um strong as well as i said before earlier but there are things unseen in the public eye that just you know that they are unaware of and it, you know everything that the, you know everything that she does in the public eye does not necessarily mean that um, her personal life also needs to be on view as well again this is something coming through in terms of um, you know what's what's seen outside in the public and what's within you know it's the energy of the mask and what's hidden as well are we also wearing a mask or are we also being authentic when we are um, showing ourselves and presenting ourselves to the world, but that does not necessarily mean that we have to be completely transparent with what's going on in and out of our life as well and who's coming in and out. You know, there are things um, that have to be left unseen, things that have to be sacred, I would say, um, things that have to be sacred that only the main eye, which is the higher realm, the higher spirit, you know, uh, that is sovereign, the overseer, the the Almighty that that knows, you know, that only the Divine Feminine and the 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 higher realm, higher realms, need to know, and that's it. So, and then for the Divine Feminine, we have the Shadow. Yeah. So, of course, you know, there's this energy of the Divine Feminine, really, or the energy of this female, or maybe this mother, or this woman, or this wife, uh, or potential wife, potential woman potential mother, um, who is incredibly strong, has a lovely home for herself. She's really all about creating beauty, comfort, luxury as well, and also maybe financially stable as well, or is on the way towards that too, or on the way towards financial recovery, I just heard as well, uh, where she may have been financially burnt as well, um, where she had been dealing with her shadow, you know, with her own shadow self here. And again, she's been riding quite a few storms here. So we have here, we've got 25, 26, 27 and 28. Very interesting because we have 27 here and we have 28. So this to me is telling me about the Saturn return energy. So this usually happens. I'm not going to explain it today, but the Saturn return energy is all of that usually happens. What well, it does happen. Um, from late 20s to early 30s um, and so when this happens an, an individual um, really does ride a storm you know in terms of their own identity in terms of what they believe in um, what they um, 
believe is true, who their family are, how they connect with their family, how they connect with their friends, what they want to do in life, you know, they're no longer that kind of like naive, young, freeing, single kind of 20 year old, you know, they're all, they're looking towards the future and they're looking towards stability, you know. Um, and this is just a natural progression in life. And I feel like this, this divine feminine in particular, this person here, let's just say this person, um, has really been riding quite a few, quite a few storms that have been, um, hidden from the public, you know? Um, and I think this is what makes this person in particular very admirable as well. Um, but it's also, it shows, um, capacity, capability, it shows in a, an inner sense of maturity. Now let's have a look at the um, strength card, the Leo energy here, this divine masculine here, because I do feel like there is a counterpart energy here. Let's have a look, um, get some clarification. It's quite a few. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have the queen. Okay, so we have the queen here um, for this card. So this is the card that's clarifying this card here. So this divine masculine, um, well, let's just continue with this energy here where this female, this divine feminine, this very um, girl power, this very kind of feminine, um, very, <coughs> excuse me, strong female energy, strong feminine energy is becoming the queen of her castle maybe for the first time, or maybe she's had examples in her life that have shown inner strength, particularly females in her life, um, who are incredibly strong, matriarchs possibly, um, who are queens of their own castle. And this person here is becoming mature out of this, you know, naive learning lessons along the way of life kind of thing into queendom energy, which is very beautiful. And we have number 11 here. How interesting is that? So we have this clarification of number 11 here and number 11 here with the queen. I also do see that the divine masculine is wanting to, is actually seeing, you know, because the, the, it's the king of the jungle, right? The lion is the king and this is the queen. Beautiful synchronicity here. Absolutely lovely. There's also a serpent here in this card, a lily and a ruby as well. So the ruby is a is a precious stone. Um, I also do see that there's something to do with bloodlines as well, the ruby here. Um, and I feel like there is an energy of pride, a family that is needing, is, is uh, evolving and is going to be created here, physically speaking, um, that could be hidden. Um, and there could be some uh, tantric energy here evolving in the near future here where this door of opportunity is going to open up and is going to be in the divine masculine's favour. Um, whether they know this or not, this is actually going to pan out just okay, just all right, just more than fine. You know, spirit doesn't want me to give it all away, but it's the energy of this divine masculine just following and needing to follow their intuition, getting outside of their own head and their pride and their ego, right? And following their inner strength here, but also their inner, in, in, their intuition, their inner wisdom here with the owl and the moon. Um, yeah, so we have the queen energy here, absolutely lovely. I do also feel like this divine masculine um, may have been tempted as well um, in the past or may still be tempted again. I pick up on energy timelines as cyclical, so it could have been in the past, something that could be happening in the present right now or in the near future. So obviously just take the messages as they resonate. Maybe it's not the right time to tune into this video. Maybe it will be the right time in the next 12 months, six months, whenever. But maybe this is the right time to tune into the video. Again, my videos are completely timeless. So I'm tuning into an energy here where, um, there's this Leo energy who may have been, or this male masculine energy who may have been um, very much in their ego, very much in their pride, actually in their own shadow aspect of arrogance here, that may have attempted to give a rose um, to their divine masculine or even approach, sorry, uh, their divine feminine, approach their counterpart, their true counterpart um, with crumbs here, with just a rose here. Um, 
but with this queen energy here yeah i just feel like they could have been entertaining a uh but it's got really dark all of a sudden um they could have been entertaining a um i just saw 9 11 as well on the chart on the timer there um a false queen a false twin flame a false true love a false soulmate here who could have been a temptation here and maybe has had offered them a poison that maybe smelt as sweet as a rose but was not a rose it was a false it was false wow and then we have the crown energy here with the strength card so what's coming through is is that this so my masculine has really learnt the lessons in a really hard and harsh way um i do feel like with the crone energy the crone is all about um an elder uh, particularly a female who um may even be a witch or maybe even be a sorcerer sorceress sorcerer who um i'm gonna say may have used black magic you know in order to coerce this male hair in particular you know black magic is actually very real it's not something that i'm just saying just to kind of like throw out there these are things that people do do and they do use animals and they do use um dead animals they use um you know trinkets as well and gifts and offerings as well you know the divine masculine may have been given something by a false person someone who they have been sexually connected to um who you know had tricked them into something here but i do feel like they learned it the hard way they learned these lessons in a hard way and they're realizing that their actual true love is a queen is is the person that they want to come through and move forward towards and approach tentatively and say look i'm i'm sorry here with the page of cups it's also the apology card as well god it's got really dark <laughs> wow look at this guys this is amazing we have the king energy here i just heard stop right now spice girls <laughs> stop right now thank you very much i need some love and with a human touch yeah so this person who they were dealing with was not human i'm also picking up on the matrix as well it's like you're only human so this person that they were dealing with this divine masculine on this male was dealing with a false person here uh would demote to this person or demean this person and say well you're only this you're not that great you're only you know devaluing them you know and this has really hurt their pride here you know i feel like it's left a few scars but actually they're realizing that in a, these really harsh lessons these this maybe this witchcraft they're opening their eyes to the reality that they were tricked they were tricked by a trickster and they may themselves have been tricked by their own beast energy, their own animal instincts in order to just, you know, be tempted by the devil here, you know, be tempted by the body, be tempted by sex, you know. I do see that there is black magic here, absolutely. Someone was doing magic at night here in particular um and was trying to manipulate and stop this masculine this this male this divine masculine or this person um to courageously act and move out of this connection towards their queen towards their queen but i do see that eventually if this hasn't happened yet this person here is recognizing and will recognize that they are they are actually a true match with the king and queen energy absolutely beautiful so we have number nine here again yeah so we have um nine energy here nine energy here with the strength card and we have 12 again so do you remember how i spoke about 12 um earlier for this person here who may have been you know closing out a cycle themselves um and they could themselves be a very strong pisces or very intuitive very uh internally spiritually connected as well and we did have 12 and they are aware of the unseen they're they're aware of the of the great beyond right and they have this 
great strength within themselves and they've also themselves been very mature. I do see that there is an age gap here as well with the Empress energy here and this Daughter of Cups energy here, the Strength card. I feel like this person is wanting to change and evolve and mature themselves here. And I do feel like this person in particular is maturing out of a cycle and into a new one, into new love energy, but it does start with an apology and tentative courageous action as well. And so there's a, a recognition, um, psychically, as I said before, at the very beginning, that there's an, a connection psychically with this person here, right? Does that make sense to you? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it does. Um, and, you know, and the recognition is divine counterpart energy here, yeah? King and queen. So, and what they were dealing with before was a sorcerer, a trickster. You know, uh, maybe even someone who was older than them themselves. Um, but I, I just, I just feel like this person was kind of a hag. <laughs> you know, someone who may have seemed on the outside very beautiful and attractive um, and lovely. And I, I do feel like there's something to do with the hands here as well that they could have been using their hands in order to. Uh, I don't know. Like they were trying to do something with their hands uh, to stop. I feel like they were doing some sort of healing or negative uh, reverse healing for this masculine in particular. So now moving on to the Wheel of Fortune, we have number 10. So, you know, a complete ending of a cycle, a complete ending of a chapter here. So we have uh, number 11 and 10 here. So let's have a look at what this is all about. I'm just looking at all the cards here. Okay. All right, just spreading them out. It's actually raining, so that's why it's just got dark. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look at this Wheel of Fortune. So this Wheel of Fortune, like what's changing, what's going to be in both of these people, these this party's favour is, we have Alethea. Oh, I've got a friend called Alethea, actually. Shout out. <laughs> but this is Alethea. And we have uh, this card here. It's quite pretty, actually. Um, and it's again, it's like this reversal. And again, I do feel like this person was trapped. I feel like this person had some witch, like some some black magic around their heart here. It's the energy of um, I don't know why the Little Mermaid comes through in my readings, or like Disney films come through. Which I haven't seen in like years, <laughs> donkey's years, um, is the energy of that uh, octopus woman <laughs> um, who casts a spell on Ariel. I'm also just hearing, I put a spell on you and now you're mine. You better stop. But, but there's the original, which is amazing. It's by Howling, what's the name? Howling Wolf. Name. Better stop the things you do. I am not. I feel like this person, this sorceress or this sorcerer, um, has been doing this in every single lifetime. Has been stopping a connection, a true love connection here. That's what I'm seeing here, and every single lifetime. The divine masculine, particularly this energy here, falls into a trap. And it's, you know what it is? It's the energy of Adam and Eve. It's the energy of Adam and Eve. Okay. Um, and, but rather than Eve, she's learnt her lesson, so she's no longer tricked by the, you know, by the serpent. It's the, it's the masculine, it's the male archetype that is tricked. Um, and, this has been going on for every single lifetime, every single life cycle, every single incarnation. <laughs> I feel like the energy of the Divine Feminine is like fed up, she's like, for goodness sakes, every single time. I'm also, my right ear is burning so much as well. Um, I'm also getting the energy of, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but my favourite director is Jim Jarmusch, and he did this film called Only Love Is Left Alive, and it's just wonderful. And there's this character called Eve, and there's a character called Adam. And that's what I'll give away, because I don't want to give the whole thing away. But um, Eve is in this film, she's just like, 
you've done this before like why are you you know kind of like in wallow in in like sabotage mode again you've done this before you know like why wouldn't you want to enjoy life and dance and music and all the wonderful things in life and you just want to just throw it away because you feel disillusioned by the world and society and like non-holy divine people you know uh and again it's that energy of this eve this divine feminine who knows her strength knows her worth and no matter how many life cycles how many lessons how many shadows how many battles that she herself has to battle out in the spiritual world that is unseen to the naked eye you know she wins she wins all the time because she knows her worth but she also knows that she's here on a mission and she knows her strength and she knows that she needs to be strong and effectively who the leader in this dynamic and this connection is is the divine feminine and this is what's unseen it's what they say all the time behind every president behind every great leader is a great female is a great woman so that's the energy that's coming through here and so with the wheel of fortune what's changing is this constant rigmarole and reversal and like upside down world and you know the world as being one way and then it, this just seems like everything is kind of like always up and down Alethea 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 what else do we wow what did I say you know we have the underworld you know we have hell here we have someone, we have two divine people who've been kicked out of heaven and thrown into hell, you know, one way or another, one cycle or another, through temptation. And their heart's been, their organ, their, the heart being a brain itself, remembers, you know, the scars, but also can get trapped um, and coerced by a trickster. And their own intuition, their own knowledge, their own awareness internally gets tricked you know, gets tricked and gets blocked. And so they're, they're pushed into hell, you know. So let's have a look at these numbers. So we have um, 50, 50, 20, 7, so 50, 75, 75, 76 and 77. So we have 77 here, which is an angel number as well. So have a look at that. Um, so we've got 10 and 77 here, okay? And then we have the underworld, which is 10, 50, so that's 65, 66, 67, and 68, okay? And we have 68 here. This could be the year of your birth as well, um, but 68 could be significant. Uh, let's round that down. That's um, 16, 15, that's 14. So that's five, yeah, so big, big changes of course with the wheel of fortune there's a change and i do feel like there's a change and an, an unveiling of the heart here i would say i feel like there's a change and unveiling of the heart there's a need to change and unveil the heart here because there's a fault line here um there's a crack right down the middle of their heart space here or there's a crack and a division between these two people these divine counterparts this true love connection there's a separation there's a crack here of a connection, a separation of a connection. But there is that flame, you know, there's that flame where both this flame connects connects these two people here, okay? And so I do feel like this is something that, um, it's like this tiny little candle within this underworld that's just still burning, still burning. And you know, one blow of the candle can just to extinguish it completely you know so I feel like the divine masculine is is learning how to take courage and to come out of the underworld come out of the darkness come out of the pain look as I say that the light's coming through again the sun's coming through again which I take as a good positive omen and they're going to take that journey outside of that fault line outside of that earthquake energy that they've been dealing with lots of changes in their own life as well lots of things that have been evolving themselves in their own life um in order to come through and resuscitate themselves here we have 50 which is adding up to six uh 50 uh 51 right so we have from 
changes, from drastic changes, maybe over the last 12 months, possibly over the last, maybe December, something changed and cracked open within them. Um, and we have the Bardo here, which is number 50, which is quite interesting. Let's have a look at that in a sec. Um, but yeah, something is changing and something is evolving here for the positive. And the Bardo is, um, well, the Bard is the poet, it's the speaker, it's the one that continues, excuse me, to share the information through story, you know? Share the knowledge through story. So maybe this is kind of like the hero's journey energy. This is kind of like the Odyssean journey where this masculine energy in particular has had so many trials and tribulations and they're surviving now um, and are here to, to live and tell the tale here and come through with light, with light. I also do see the, um, the strength card as a light worker. So I feel like what's changing for them, this masculine in particular, is their career is becoming, or their life purpose is becoming more holy or sacred in one way or another. It's having more, it's having more meaning in their life. Let's have a look at the Daughter of Cups, please. Okay, let's have a look at the Daughter of Cups. So there's a change, a drastic change that had happened. Something had to change, something drastic, something changed a connection here. And I do feel like there is a third party interference here. Um, someone had tried to block this connection, someone has tried to stop this connection, but this masculine in particular, this divine masculine energy in particular, is recognising that they were tricked and that they are also recognising the um, true counterpart connection here with the king and queen. They do see a match here themselves. They finally found the light. Again, if this does not happen yet, they will do, because uh, we have the flame card here. Yeah, and so there is a change here that's coming through. Uh, I do feel like this masculine energy in particular was very confused. They didn't know what was right, what was up or down, what was right or left, what was right or wrong. I just feel like they just put themselves in a situation that was very confusing and unholy and they were just trapped in the underworld with death. They went deep, they went deep into a crevice somewhere, somewhere dark and dangerous, you know. Um, due to um, curiosity, remember, cats are all about curiosity, curiosity can kill the cat, you know. So I just feel like they're coming through out of, out of the shadow, out of the deep, out of the pain, out of the darkness, and through and out into the light here. Beautiful energy. Let's have a look at the Daughter of Cups now, please, Spirit. Thank you. I do feel like it's the masculine's um, divine right to do this on their own for themselves here. I just feel like the Divine Feminine on this occasion is just kind of like out of the equation right now because they can't enable this ma this masculine to come out of the shadow. They have to do that themselves. All right, let's have a look at the Daughter of Cups and what this is about. Um, divine Feminines, you could be expecting a child as well. I just do have to say that. Maybe a daughter. Maybe you already have a child that's a daughter. Maybe she is your only child, a female in particular. Let's have a look at the Daughter of Cups, please. There could be a spirit, um, a child and spirit as well, um, who's coming through to help guide this um, potential father for this Daughter of Cups as well, out of this hell, you know, in through a spiritual connection, through spiritual um, guidance. Let's have a look. What is this Daughter of Cups all about, please, Spirit? Thank you. Very sweet energy, this Daughter of Cups, actually. Okay, let's have a look. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to come through. But let's have a look. What is this Daughter of Cups all about? Come on. It's like a shy energy. <laughs> Very shy energy. Yeah, I just feel like this divine masculine in particular was. Um, I just keep, I just heard love is a drug. I just feel like they they were in an, in, a, in an addiction pattern, or they had like some sex addiction or something. So we have the hunter here. 
Okay, so clarifying the Daughter of Cups, we're going to get one more card. Clarifying the Daughter of Cups, we have the Hunter. So this child and spirit um, that may have come through in other lifetimes due to this connection in another lifetime, so this child, um, would like to come through in this lifetime as a manifestation as a child <laughs> from this union, physical union, okay, in this lifetime. It's coming through, again, the sun is coming out really brightly now. Can you see that? It's lovely. Um, to say, look, you need to fight for this. You need to hunt. You need to go and hunt your prey here, here and be the lion that you are. Yeah? You've got to hunt for it. You've got to hunt for it, okay? So that's what I'm seeing here, that this... Um, this child, um, this female in particular, is helping a father figure here. But I also see with the hunter, we have number nine. Um, they were, I feel like this, um, this child or this particular child and spirit uh, may not necessarily even be a ch uh, like a child that's gonna come through um, as a baby. <laughs> Um, could be a friend, could be a spirit friend, right? Um, is I just saw, I just smelt the smell of um, anaesthetic. Um, is it anaesthetic? Yeah, anaesthetic. Anaesthetic, is that right? Yeah, anaesthesia. Um, you know when you like put the mask over and then you just fall asleep? Um, I don't know why that's coming through, but maybe this child, this spirit child, um, may have died through... Um, through an operation or something. Um, I don't know what, what, why that's coming through. Um, but anyway, look at this. So this this spirit child, or even this child that is, is going to come through. Um, but anyway, this child and spirit is helping the this connection, is helping this divine masculine to go and hunt for what they truly want, hunt for what they truly see and desire and know on an intuitive level that they are a perfect match with the king and queen energy here. It's a kaleidoscope, rainbow loving energy here, but also a complete match in all ways, you know. There's wisdom, there's love, there's sensuality, there's sexuality, there's tantric energy here. Um, and they're saying that they are the one, you are meant to be with each other, you know. So this divine masculine in particular is getting guidance on a psychic level, spiritual level, from this child and spirit that, you know, you need to hunt for what you want. Because, you know, <laughs> they're not going to hang around. I mean, this is a tree and it does stay in them and it's rooted in the same place. But let's be honest, this is a person. You know, they can find roots anywhere. You know, maybe they have multiple roots everywhere and anywhere around the world. You know, you just never know. Um, can't make this up. And this spirit animal, sorry, this spirit child is saying you need to put a ring on this because, you know, this feminine could be finding roots with other people, with someone else, you know, and you have to put a ring on this because you know that they are the one. Perfect match. Yeah. So stop playing and messing about in the underworld. Come out of the shadows, come into the light. Go courageously and hunt for what you want as a true king of the jungle, as a true king. Put a ring on that, you know? You know, and I'm also hearing this Sebastian um, from The Little Mermaid saying, you gotta kiss the girl, go and kiss the girl. And it's the energy of like, Go, go for it, go for it. But it's also the, the ring is um, the energy of um, completion as well. So it's, it's union and completion. It's eternal love. It's the symbol of eternal love, right? And remember where we put the ring, it's on the left hand side, left finger, and it is connected to our heart. So again, the divine masculine, if, if they have not yet, they will be connecting more and more to their heart and understanding that, okay, now I get it, you know, now I get it, and now I get what this is all about. They take a bit of a while to, to wake up to this, 
But I do feel like that something has really shaken and cracked open their foundation and awareness. Maybe they were being too slow. Maybe they hadn't expressed themselves. Maybe they hadn't, you know, told the right story. Maybe they were hiding their truth here, you know. Maybe they were just too confused. And then this divine, this, this divine child, this divine spirit um, child is saying, you know, this is where you find true nectar for your soul here on a soul level. You know, this is all, see how the energy has changed. This is all positive. This is all light. This is all beauty. This is all, you know, great, great nurturing energy, food for your soul, manna from heaven, you know, energy. And so that's where you find completion. That's where you find positive connection. And I feel like this divine masculine is definitely going to be understanding that and, and being aware that whatever they're entertaining is the complete opposite of nectar. It's the underworld. It's death itself. I do feel like there is someone here who is incorporating this energy who is just with the wrong associations, the wrong people, let's say, um, that are just not in their highest interest in particular. These are really beautiful cards. Um, let's just see what's at the bottom of the deck for the... Um, yeah, so yeah, so we have the Father of Pentacles here. So this person wants stability, this person wants to be a father, this person definitely wants to have something for the future and they're looking towards the future. You know, look, if you see these two cards, like this um, strength card is looking towards their future, to their fortune, to changing their fortune, to changing <clears throat> and evolving their fortunes as well, their fortune, their financial stability as well. You know, and the Father of Pentacles is all about that. It's all about the fortune, their fortune, their stability, their finances, you know. Um, and their fortune lies in legacy. Their fortune lies in legacy. Let's have a look at the bottom of the deck. And we have the forest. So you, you see how we have this tree, which is the divine feminine. It's one tree standing alone, but maybe not for long, or maybe hidden within she has a network of people that she knows conoscenti people in industry in her workplace but also in terms of people that she knows family friends around the world that are all interconnected and this is what the divine masculine may be scared of is this, this person has a lot of connections you know they might be worried and scared that this divine feminine um their counterpart their true love is with other people, mingling with other people, finding opportunities elsewhere with like-minded people here. So this person here is knowing that they need to really secure this, you know, connection and come in strong, come in as a king, you know, and say stop to a connection. I don't, I'm, I'm done with being tricked by your malicious ways from another third party situation. I'm going to listen to my guidance, make an apology, run courageously towards what I want with drive, desire, passion. Secure this through a proposal, a high level commitment, because I know that this is true love, nectar, manna from heaven. So I finally realise that they are the one for me. Look at all the tens that are there. 30. This person could be turning 30 or 30 could be very significant. This could have been like three major, major chapters in their life that have been very um, exemplifying in their life. That These are major, three major chapters in their life or three major experiences in, the, in their life that have... Um, shaped their life completely and changed their life completely these are big life changes and then with the forest this is all about family you know the forest is like like-minded beings are being sprouted out children family legacy long-lasting future based on stability lots of trees yeah so this is what's happening um right now I think I'm actually going to leave that there. Um, 
and you know, of course we have this, you know, closure of these two cards with these rainbow energies, you know, this rainbow energy like going towards what they want in their future and stability. And it's like they don't want to just have one thing. It's like a small little temptation. They want to have they want to have it all. <laughs> they want to have a whole forest of opportunity. I do I do get the energy. Look, the three tens are there again that we're here. They're recognizing that, you know, this person is the one for them and they're really wanting to make a change with the five and one here. Yeah. So five and one is changed and we have an emerald as well at the bottom there, which could be very significant. Um, so that's just lovely. I could go on with these cards, but I, I don't really want to take any more any more energy, any more time into reading them. Um, but I will definitely use the archetype cards again. I really do hope you enjoyed me reading them as well. They're just beautiful cards. I do hope you enjoyed this reading as well. Please do like as well. Um, thank you also for your lovely private readings as well. I really appreciate you. Take care, beautiful souls. Love and light, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.